Good evening. Welcome to the Buck Stops here. I am Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, as lakhs of Marathas congregate in South Mumbai today, demanding reservations, we look at this demand. Does it fuel a genuine aspiration based on the economic vulnerability of a particular community or is it in fact a political quagmire for the party in power, whichever party that may be, whichever year that may be, given the political strength of the Marathas? That's our big focus this evening. And later on the program, India at 70. Ahead of Independence Day, we start our special series. Tonight, Adi Godrej joins us as we look at the biggest challenges, challenges facing India. But first, our top story. Mumbai brought to a standstill as close to 9 lakh Marathas from across the state march to the Azad Maidan in the heart of the city, demanding quotas in government jobs and colleges. In South Mumbai, schools and colleges were forced to shut down and an entire five-kilometer stretch was cordoned off for the mega march. Lakhs of Marathas came from all over the state, almost bringing South Mumbai to a standstill. Our parents the march which went off peacefully forced an immediate response from the chief minister. While he announced Maratha students could be eligible for scholarships, so far kept only for OBC students, he also promised to push through job quotas through the court. But that was not enough. This protest is not good news for the chief minister. They began a year ago with the rape and murder of a Maratha girl. Although they are demanding backward status, Marathas have been a dominant caste. A third of all the voters are Marathas. All chief ministers have been Marathas except three Brahmins, including Devendra Fadnavis. The last Brahmin chief minister in the mid-90s was replaced by a Maratha. The Maratha Kranti Mocha is a silent rally, silent march, which is why you will not hear slogans. But just look at the crowd. The crowd, of course, extends right here from JJ Flyover all the way up to and beyond Baikala Zoo which is, of course, more than three kilometers. The protest kept politicians at bay, even though the Shiv Sena and the Congress support the Maratha Kranti Mocha, which organized the protest. Both parties were kept away from the stage. The Maratha community and their demands resonate across the political spectrum in Maharashtra, and their sheer strength in numbers cannot be ignored by any ruling party, which is why if their demands are not met, these large crowds could return to Mumbai or perhaps even head to Delhi. In Mumbai with Anand Zanane, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. So are there legitimate demands over here for the massive Maratha community in Maharashtra? Uh, or is this really a part of a trend where we see different communities in several states make these demands uh, for, uh, for reservations? Joining us now uh, to debate this, Arvind Sawant, the spokesperson of the Shiv Sena, Rajiv Pandey of the BJP, uh, Bala Saab Sarate, the author and representative of Maratha Manch, Bharat Kumar Raut and Kumar Ketkar, senior journalist. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us. Mr. Pandey, let me come to you first. Um, the numbers are astounding. Rarely in India do we see numbers as big as this. But beyond paying lip service to the cause of reservations for the Maratha community, can you realistically do anything, given the fact that if you do, then you'll go above uh, the maximum amount that reservations are allowed in any state. As far as the BJP is concerned, BJP has taken a stand that we are committed to the reservation to Marathas. And we are the person who have given, who have made law when the Congress BJP, uh, Congress NCP government enacted an ordinance, when we came into the power, we, we converted into the law. And thereafter, now the matter is before the Honorable High Court. OBC Commission also, it is referred, the High Court has referred to the OBC Commission, and we have given all information that why Maratha should be given reservation uh, under the OBC quota. As far as the other parties are concerned, when they lost election in 2014, 
they formed a commission called Narayan Rane Commission and without applying mind, they, they passed an ordinance. They were in the government for last 15 years. First, they, they, they constituted a commission called Bapat Commission and as per their commission, they said ki, there is no need to give reservation to the uh, No, but it's Maratha. not just that. There However, is a PIL they... which is also, Mr. Pandey, one moment, there has also been a PIL in the court where this, the, the High Court, the Bombay High Court said that the total number of reservations in the state would go up to 73%, exceeding the limit set uh, set up by the Supreme Court. So what you are doing is essentially cherry picking what? examples. There are other examples in, in... as well. Uh, where, uh, uh, you know, I mean, for example, the Bapat report had, re had, had rejected granting them uh, additional reservations. So it's, it's, it's back and forth. There are, some, there are some cases where, yes, reports have suggested that there, there should be more reservations, but the High Court has said that you are exceeding the limit set by the Supreme Court. That's what I am that saying. The earlier government, they just did the lip service. They are all you bound to that, do the but same now what service. we are doing i'm i'm what? just making my point yes that that we, even if it crosses 50% in tamil nadu the the reservation is more than 50% so we are committed to give reservation to the maratha community even if it crosses 50% how do you intend that, to do that whatever has to be done has anyway so it's going to be an argument that. okay okay one second let me go across to arvind savant uh, a spokesperson of the shiv sena maratha pride um, Mr. Sawant has been essential uh, to the politics of the Shiv Sena. It's your core identity. Uh, but in this particular scenario, there are many who would argue that reservations need to be given on the basis of a particular necessity. If you look at the Maratha community in Maharashtra, they have a higher uh, level of incomes and lower poverty relative to others with the exception of Brahman households. Therefore, how do you argue that it is justifiable? First thing, it is, it is justifiable because they are deprived of a legitimate rights. Do not compare handful of Marathas with all the poor Marathas in Maharashtra. Okay. The farmers, 99% farmers belong to the Maratha community. And they are very poor. Their land holding is below 5, five, five acres. And they are facing droughts and so many calamities of the nature. And therefore, just for the sake of caste, they are deprived of a legitimate right of education or a job. As far as Shiv Sena is concerned, let it be very clear from my side. Shiv Sena doesn't believe in casteism at all. But then, because of Bundle Commission, all these casteism walls have been erected now. And after Bundle Commission, if a majority of a community, just because of the caste, they are deprived of a legitimate right to have an education, or some reservation in education, or some reservation in jobs, it is bound to get, and therefore Shiv Sena has got another stand also. Injustice cannot be bared. Okay. So we do not tolerate injustice, and there is an injustice with this community for a long time. And okay. Their, their rally, silent rally, we supported that rally for that. They, their demand. Bala Sahib Sarate, let me ask you this, sir. Uh, Mr. Sawan making the point that, look, you know, when you look at the Maratha community, then you need to understand there are elements and very large elements in the, within the Maratha community, large sections, which have been deprived socioeconomically and therefore this demand is legitimate. However, there is the opposite argument also that the topmost strata among the Marathas, uh, the Gadi Varchap, uh, forgive my pronunciation, run educational institutions, factories and politics. There's the Vadya Varcha, transporters, huge owners of land contracting firms and then there is the vadi varcha who are small farmers who actually require perhaps reservations how do you discriminate between these groups why should rich members of the maratha community get reservations potentially actually we should understand the reality of uh, criteria of reservation maratha community is what, what, one moment, let, let, let Mr. Sarate make his point. Go ahead, sir. Huh. Uh, you, uh, if we look to the economic survey of Maharashtra 2015 and 16, and all the economic surveys of Maharashtra, the 60% income of Maharashtra comes from five cities only, Nagpur, Nasik, Mumbai, Thane and Pune. And in those cities, Maratha is not at all dominant. Maratha has no uh, uh, existence in those cities. Uh, how could you uh, decide that Maratha is uh, economically dominant? 
if you uh, say that Maratha has uh, the uh, factories and educational institutions, how the educational institutions are run? They are run by the government uh, but isn't uh, it also and true? government regulations. But isn't it also true, sir, that 32% of Marathas own in excess of 75% of land in the state? No, no, not at all. In Maharashtra, there is no land census act actually. There is one book written by Gail Amwet. Okay. Uh, the cultural, uh, cultural, uh, cultural revolt in colonial society, Gail Amwet has given the data who, uh, which community has uh, uh, the land holding more. She has uh, given the data and it is proved that Maratha community is not that landlord and uh, uh, there is no uh, land census in Maharashtra. How much uh, land Maratha own, it is not also uh, given in any detailed uh, survey. Actually, these are the blames on Maratha community okay. that Maratha community is not socially and educationally backward, but Maratha community is the only community in Maharashtra which is checked in that sense that Maratha community is socially, educationally and uh, economically backward. And uh, the uh, prior government, Congress government uh, uh, had said it. Repeatedly, the BJP government has also said the same thing that Maratha community is socially, educationally okay. and economically backward. All right, I want to backward. go across to Bharat Kumar Raut. Uh, Mr. Raut, you know, a lot of, some people would argue that this is part of a national trend. We've seen the Patidar community in Gujarat. Uh, we've seen the Jat community in Haryana, parts of Rajasthan as well. And now, of course, the Maratha community, which, which has been really start, which has started this from 1997 onwards. But if you look at Marathas, Jats and Patels, there is a sense that economic conditions uh, among these communities in many instances are better than many peer communities and therefore the demand for reservations may not necessarily be justified. Uh, is this part of a, a, a larger uh, nationwide problem? Who deserves reservations? And now let me first uh, confess that uh, Personally, I don't believe in caste-based uh, reservations because uh, as, as Indians, we should be heading towards uh, classless and casteless society. And if you continue to give caste-based reservations, in my opinion, I am, uh, this, this uh, uh, aim will never be fulfilled. Okay. Having said that, let me also say that if, if all communities have to be on equal, uh, on equal ground, then they should also start on a level field. And in that case, some communities in the nation do need require ha hand holding for at least for some time. Here in Marat, uh, our misgiving is that like Patels, like Jats, like uh, uh, other Kamina community or like Maratha in Maharashtra, we are misgiving that they are the ruling community, they are sugar barons, they are having many educational institutions, they are sugarcane uh, growers and therefore they are rich and wealthy. But let me say that this community which is wealthy and rich and forward, that is not even 1% of the total population of Marathas. Okay. In that case, the rest of the population of Maratha is, is as backward, as poor as any other backward community in Maharashtra. At least I can I, I say this with all responsibility. Mr. In that case, yes. it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is unjust to say that entire Maratha community is having uh, better living than the other uh, OBCs or other backward communities. Okay. Those who are having, you say, 32 percent, that wealth and that land holding belongs to hardly a minority, percentage an absolute of distinct minority. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I accept the fact that some of these numbers and data are cherry picked. Uh, but there are various arguments and different arguments and those who argue those points present data uh, which, which sort of suits their arguments. And let me therefore bring out another statistic over here. Kumar Ketkar, let me bring it to you. If you look at the overall scenario as far as reservation is concerned, uh, reservations have always, and correctly so perhaps, been linked not just with the status of caste but with the economic the, and certainly the socio-economic benefits that it potentially brings to particular castes. But if you look at economic growth in our country and the decline in poverty numbers from 37% at one stage, it, def, it stands now at 22%. So one could therefore argue that the, that the numbers allotted for reservation need to also come down. But does that, is, can that ever happen because the demands for reservation only seem to be going one way, up. 
Well, actually, it is not very difficult to understand because essentially it is a political question and also economic question in the sense that most of these Marathas, which is 34% of the Maharashtra's population, which is almost equal to 4 crores, or you can say equal to the population of whole of California, that is the population of Marathas alone in Maharashtra, and most of them are agricultural communities. Majority of them are agriculturists. And agriculture is in deep crisis. You will notice that the Maratha demand for reservation started along with the growing agricultural crisis. It was not there in 89, though Mandal came in 89. It was not there prominently. In 95, when Mandal was officially accepted by a majority of the country's parties, it started much later, much later because the agricultural crisis deepened. Now, many of the farmers who have committed suicide, you will not find any farmers committing suicide prior to 1985 or prior to 1990. There were some. But the farmers' suicide as a point, as a crisis, began only after 1990s, partly, you can say, only after globalization, when the resources began to go towards industry and towards cities. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean globalization is at fault. But the point is, agricultural crisis, which is an economic crisis, actually deepened the community's demand that we are being sidelined. And so, essentially, as you see, many of the speeches today in the Morcha yes. were saying that uh, the debt should not be there, Swaminathan Committee report should be implemented, and so on and so forth. So, essentially, there are agricultural demands. On the other hand, there are cultural demands. Cultural demands include punishment to those who commit atrocities yes. against Marathas. Yes. And the political demands include the reservation. So, it is political, economic and cultural question. 34% of the people, which is 4 crores, as I said, equal to the whole sure. California population, cannot be sidelined because in each party, the dominant caste is Maratha, irrespective of which party it is. One may be Hindu uh, party, another may be number. secular party, and I, I think, Mr. Dalit Ketka, party, you, you strike but upon all parties have the, 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 the core issue over here. Of Maratha, and the core issue over here is the numbers of the community concerned. It's massive. Which government can afford to give reservation for this huge number. It's a huge issue. Uh, it, and as you correctly mentioned, it transcends the political, social, uh, yeah, and cultural in space in respect, Maharashtra. In that respect. And, 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 and clearly there are no clear in signs. And of course, show, there is that entire Supreme Court uh, judgment as well, which puts uh, the restriction. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us this evening. One way or the other, what we saw in Mumbai today the numbers were staggering, almost 9 lakh people in a part of South Mumbai uh, protesting for reservation members of the Maratha community.